This is the story of Noah's Ark. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Are you ready? Let's begin now. Noah had never seen so many animals in his life. There were thousands, and they were all in his backyard, waiting to board the ark. As his sons applied the last coat of tar to the ship's joints, Noah checked the sky again. Uh-oh, I see a big rain cloud rolling in from the west. Uh. Noah cleared his throat. <laughs> Ahem! Attention, everyone! It's time to start boarding. So let's just go two by two up the gangplank. <laughs> All the animals rushed to find their mates and get in line. Eunice, where are you? Come on, Harold! We're gonna be late! Noah's sons put the buckets of tar away while their wives grabbed the last loaves of bread out of the oven. Meanwhile, Noah's neighbors came by to watch the whole affair. They gossiped and laughed over what Noah was doing. A boat in the middle of the desert. Has he lost his mind? <coughs> it stinks around here with all these animals. The zebras were the last to board. As they trotted up the gangplank, Noah took one last look around. Everything, including his home, would have to be rebuilt. He sighed. Oh, all the work I put into my tools, Ed. <sighs> but his wife thought he spent too much time in the tool shed. It's God's will, Noah. He shut the ship's door as the sky grew dark. The Ark was no small boat. In fact, it was three stories tall and longer than a football field. Getting food and water to all the animals was going to be a big job, but Noah had his family to help him. Ham, his middle son, came up with a plan. Food and supplies will be stored on the first floor. All the meat-eating animals will stay on the second floor, and all the plant-eating animals will be on the third floor. We'll stay on the first floor and feed them all twice a day. If the animals have to go to the bathroom, they'll ring a bell and we'll take them up to the bow. So they all settled into their places. Seven days later, it started to rain. First, the rain was nothing more than a mist. Then it fell gently for a little while. After seven more days, God turned on the fountains deep in the soil and opened the windows of heaven. A downpour of huge drops pelted the earth. Pools of water gathered everywhere. The wind howled, lightning flashed, and thunder shook the boat. As the waters continued to rise, the ark rose with them. Every valley was filled and every town was covered. Day after day, night after night, the torrent of rain continued. By the third week, the ducks were unhappy. Can't we go outside and paddle around for just a little bit? We won't get lost. The camels were grouchy. Everything is damp and covered with mold. It's bad for my allergies. My joints ache. And the bears were complaining. Why did we have to leave the marine animals behind? We're tired of eating nuts and berries. What are we doing on this boat anyway? One of the ducks stood up. Well, I heard it from the llamas who heard from the giraffes that the guy in charge here talked to God. And God told him to do all this. No! Come on, no, get out of here. 
Noah's dog, Shep, spoke up. That's right. I was there. I heard the whole conversation between God and my master. God said, I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made I will destroy from the face of the earth. But you, Noah, have been a good man, so make thee an ark of gopher wood. Come into the ark with thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives, and bring two of every kind of creeping thing on the earth, a male and a female. The camels bellowed. What for? Shep continued. God said the earth had become an evil place. Too much greed, too much hatred, too much fighting. He wanted to start from scratch. The female dog pricked up her ears. You mean everyone else got the axe? That's right. The ducks waddled forward and talked in unison. We, we must, must have, have done, done something, something right, right to be here. here. Everyone nodded. Then we'd better stop complaining. A hush fell over the animals, except the snake that simply said, Sssss. Noah had worked on the ark for 81 years. That may sound like a lifetime, but Noah was 480 when God spoke to him. People lived a lot longer in those days, and it wasn't from eating yogurt. It was because they lived a good and honest life. And so, for 40 days and 40 nights, heavy rain poured down. The water rose until it covered the mountains, and everything on Earth died. But Noah, his family, and the animals in the ark were safe. God made sure of that. Then God turned off the fountains deep in the soil, closed the windows of heaven, and made a wind to dry the earth. On the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark bumped into the top of a high, lone mountain and settled there. Noah opened the window of the ark and let a dove fly out. She returned feeling discouraged. <sighs> I couldn't find a dry place to rest my wings. Oh. Noah took the dove back in. Seven days later, Noah asked her to look again. This time, she returned with a twinkle in her eye and a branch from an olive tree in her beak. This got everyone's hopes up. Noah waited another seven days, then went to the dove. Have you rested enough to go again? The dove winked and flew off. <laughs> Three times a charm! That was the last time Noah saw the dove because she found a place to build a new nest. Noah threw open the window and peered out. The ark was resting on dry land. <laughs> Hallelujah! Then he heard the voice of God. Noah, it's time for everyone to leave the ark. So Noah called out to Ham. Lower the gangplank! And instead of stampeding wildly, the animals politely filed off the boat. They said goodbye to Noah and went out into the world to start anew. When Noah's wife stepped outside, she saw a beautiful rainbow in the sky. Noah, look! Yes, it means that both God and I honored our agreement, and that God will not destroy the earth again. The rainbow signaled that everything was going to be okay from then on, which is why people today still like to see rainbows. God had remembered Noah and every living thing. And because Noah had followed God's instructions, he lived to be 950 years old. <laughs>